Okay, let's name the endocrine glands, and I could also say endocrine tissue, and then let's put their relative locations in a drawing of a dog that I have borrowed, and I'm going to enlarge this, and although we have a dog on the screen, this would also apply to cats and horses, our other two main companion animals that we discuss, and it could also apply to most mammals that we deal with. Okay, so let's start in the most cranial aspect here in our drawing, and I want to talk about the pineal gland. Now, this is just a drawing, but the pineal gland is within the brain, and it's actually on the very midline of the brain, so this is a relatively okay location in terms of this drawing but it's actually you know very deep within the brain on the midline of the brain actually next we have the pituitary gland which is spelled out here and it's at the base of the brain and this drawing of course doesn't do it justice because it doesn't show the brain but it shows the relative location so the pituitary gland you should know is of two parts for the animals that we talk about, we can talk about the anterior pituitary gland and the posterior pituitary gland. So that's two different glands <coughs> Excuse me. that we talk about. Now, if you look at the drawing, I'm going to put some blue right above the pituitary gland. And this is in the brain, of course, but it's a structure that's also uh, labeled here, I'm going to bring the label in, called the hypothalamus. And we should know that the hypothalamus sits right above the pituitary gland, and it often controls what the pituitary gland is releasing. Of course, remember, these are all endocrine glands slash tissues, right? Okay, so then, uh, moving more caudally, we can talk about the thyroid gland, which I'm pointing to here, the term at least, and then the gland is here in the neck. It's actually attached to the trachea. And then we have the parathyroid gland here. And this drawing shows some space between the two. That's usually not the case. They would be kind of together in the same structure, but you can identify the thyroid gland separate from the parathyroid gland, and look at that name, para, meaning beside. So the parathyroid gland is beside the thyroid. Now, I'm going to move in my crude little drawing of the heart because the heart makes a hormone, and we can understand that. Next, I'm going to draw in a relatively crude drawing of the diaphragm, which is the main inspiratory muscle, but it separates the more cranial cavity known as the thoracic cavity, which the heart resides in, and then behind or caudal to the diaphragm, we have the abdominal cavity. And so I want to move to the abdominal cavity and name the stomach. And I'm going to Enlarge the stomach here. Now, this drawing, there's the stomach. It's got a portion of it. It's not quite right. It would be more forward in the animal than that, but this is a borrowed drawing, so I'll just label it stomach. Then, and of course, these are, this is an endocrine tissue. Then we have the liver, which I'm going to portray as a block of blue here and label it. And the liver is endocrine tissue. Of course, you realize most of these tissues have multiple functions. Okay? Okay, now I do want to point out that the stomach ends and then we have, I'm making this loop a little bigger here. You can see I'm working down here. There's always a loop of small intestine that connects to the stomach and as the food, ingested food, leaves the stomach goes into this first loop of the intestine and that's where this pancreas is located. 
The pancreas is always located in the first loop of the small intestine near the stomach. So we also should know that the small intestine that I did draw is also a releaser of hormones. So let me tilt that up and draw that like that. The small intestine endocrine tissue. Now I'm going to move to the adrenal gland, which is spelled out here. And of course, there's a misspelling. Or I shouldn't say of course, but when you borrow something, they didn't spell check. So G-L-A-N-D, adrenal gland. And that's here, cranial to this structure. But that's the adrenal gland, and we should know it has two parts. The adrenal cortex, and we'll be naming these later, spelling them out in another lesson. But the adrenal cortex and the adrenal medulla, that's the two parts. But then that structure right behind it is the kidney. And lo and behold, of course, we're not seeing the other side of the animal, but the kidney, there are two kidneys, of course. Kidney is endocrine tissue. Then I want to point out the ovaries. These two structures here, or black dots in this case, are the ovaries. And you can see the spelling further away. Okay, those are endocrine organs. Then, at the end of the ovaries, or connected to the ovaries, is the uterus. So let me move over the label for that. Because lo and behold, the uterus in some animals makes hormones. Okay. And then one more tissue that isn't always here. I guess I've got two more tissues. One, the placenta, which I want to name, because if the animal is pregnant, the placenta makes hormones. And this drawing, finally this drawing, actually has the sex organs of both sexes because it's easier to do it that way in a drawing. And so the testes are here. You know they're in a scrotum outside of the abdominal cavity, hopefully. They need to be held at a lower temperature than body temperature. But the testes are an endocrine tissue. That ends this lesson.